Hello and welcome. This is going to be our lecture video for September 11th, a Friday. And for this lecture, all we're going to do is go over the worksheet that I handed out in class. If you don't have this, it's available on our Extra Stuffs cal uh, calendar. And I'll just do two of these problems, you'll do the rest, and then we'll call it good. All right, so I'm going to block out from two here, so I've got some space to write. Let's read the directions. For number one, it says construct a scatter plot. State if there appears to be a positive correlation, negative correlation, or no correlation. So let's talk about what that would look like. So a positive correlation that's when the dots on our scatter plot make a well-formed line and that line has a positive slope. Something like that. So that we can pass a line through those dots, get relatively close to all of them, and that line would have a positive slope. All right, negative correlation is, it's not the opposite, it still means that the scatter plot makes a well-formed line Maybe a couple extra outliers there. But uh, the slope of the line that goes through these dots has a negative slope. And then there's no correlation. That's where the dots just are kind of random. You could try and pass a line through this, but you're not going to get very close to very many dots. So that's no correlation. All right. So in order to figure that out, we, we do have to dot the scatter plot and try to pass a line through it. When there is a correlation, identify uh, the relationship as linear or nonlinear. All right. So we in linear, the line is straight. So you can have a well-formed line that's straight, but the other option is a well-formed line that's not straight. So nonlinear, I can get a, a line pretty close to all of these dots. Maybe it makes something like a U-shape. All right, so we can still get very close to all those dots with a line, but uh, it's not going to be a straight line. All right, let's practice plotting some points. So the first number tells us how far to go over on the x-axis, the second number tells us how far to go up. That first point at 1830 should be right about there. And maybe I cross it out so I don't accidentally plot it twice. 5,000 comma 50 should be right there. 620 comma 70. 820 comma 90. And then 880 comma 90. So same y value but a little bit displaced on the x value and then 990 comma 100 is going to be right in that top corner okay so let's describe this this looks like positive and linear correlation all right so positive and linear correlation we could even add in one more word we could say this is strong positive because it's a they're very close to whatever line goes through here. There's also weak positive where they're a little bit more spread out. But let's just focus on those words positive and linear. Okay. Um, so I think we checked the first three boxes here of plotting it, saying it's positive and linear. Now we've got to find the slope intercept form of the equation of a line that fits the data. So what you do is you do your best to go through all of this data. A straight edge can be really helpful here. Your goal is to get about the same number of dots above and below the line. Here, if I put it kind of like this, there's two dots above, three dots below, one dot that's kind of right on the line. I think that's pretty good. Maybe we could go just like a tad bit lower. Uh, it's not going to be precise, but I think that looks pretty darn good. Now what we want to do is find the equation for this line. And to do that, we want to pick two points that are very far apart on this line and then use them to do the algebra. So I'll pick this point here. 
the point from the um, the table is 990 comma 100 but I'm just going to round that up to 10,000 comma 100. The points you pick don't have to actually come from the data set they can just be points that look like they're on the line. And then I'll pick this point down here this is definitely not in the data set but it looks like it's on the line at 0 comma 10. All right let's find our slope so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This becomes 90 over 10,000. I can cross down to 0. We get 9 over 1,000. Um, with a big fraction like that, I probably actually want to use a decimal. So that's 0 0.009. So too many zeros. Let's see, that would be 9 over 10, 9 over 100, 9 over 1,000, yeah, 9 thousandths. Yeah, that looks right. So that's our slope. No, we can't box it yet. That's just our m value. And then for the b value, because we picked a point that was right on the y-axis, that is the b value. That is our y-intercept. If we didn't have that, we'd have to borrow one of these points, plug it in, and calculate. But I'm confident to say that y equals 0.009m plus 10 is a pretty good equation to model this data with. And now I can go use this equation. If I want to go calculate, uh, extrapolate out further or interpolate somewhere uh, a gap in this data, I can use this equation to do that. All right, let's do one from the back side. Problem number five, the cost of a flight is related to the length of the flight by this equation where x is distance in miles and y is cost in dollars. What does the slope of the line represent? So this actually has a meaning in the context of this problem. All right, it's not just an arbitrary number. It means that as x is increasing by 1, y will increase by 0 0.0891. So what, how we could say that in a sentence is that each mile causes an average price increase of about nine cents. So each additional mile that the plane takes you relative to other planes is costing about nine cents, about nine cents a mile. What does the y-intercept of this function represent? So that 27.2, we can kind of assign a meaning to that. That's the flat rate. So even if we go zero miles, we're still paying $27. You could think of that as just like the cost to sit down. Um, flat rate, the cost of a flight that goes zero miles. So it's sort of like the pricing structure says start at $27 and then charge an additional nine cents per mile. All right, using this model, what would be the cost of a flight that travels 950 miles? So X is distance. We've got a distance. We're going to plug this into X, round to the nearest dollar. So we've got y equals 0 0.0891 times 950 plus 27.2. Here I get my calculator out, also known as my phone. Let's plug this in 0 0.0891 times 950 plus 27.2. Point two, I get 111.84 round to the nearest dollar so we will round that to a hundred and twelve dollars and that's just an estimate uh, we are just based off a trend trying to make a prediction what a company would charge for this flight doesn't mean it's exact. All right, 
how much would a 4,600 mile flight cost? All right, so now we've got an X again, but now it's like way out there. So most likely in uh, problem C, we were interpolating because we have data up to 950 miles. This is probably extrapolating because we probably don't have data all the way out to 4,600. We'd have to see the data to know that for sure. Um, let's plug it in. Y equals 0 0.0891 times 4,600 plus 27.2. 0 0.0891 times 46,000 plus 27.2. We get $437 if we round to the nearest dollar. All right, what distance corresponds to cost of $130? Round your answer to the nearest mile. So this is now a Y value because Y is cost in dollars. So as I set this up, the 130 takes the place of Y in the equation, then we solve for X. So we got to do a little bit of algebra here. 130 equals 0 0.0891 times x plus 27.2. We'll subtract away that 27.2 from both sides. We'll get 102.8 equals 0 0.0891x divided by that 0 0.0891. And let's see, and we'll round this to the nearest mile. 102.8 divided by 0 0.0891 is 1,154 miles. So you can go pretty far for 130 bucks. All right. I think we'll call that good there. Just check in some of my other math here. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, I'll put in some questions here uh, for you to get credit for this video, and have a good rest of your day.